all right so let's start with the reference image i have this uh, reference image here and to add it into the blender file i'll just alt middle click to go to front view let me just activate the shortcut which shows the keys now just go to your folder and drag your reference file here and it creates an image directly inside the front view of course you can move it anywhere you want so i'll just put it here and i'll start with this first basic shape in the bottom so for creating this type of shapes just add a plane r y and press control and drag and then you can see here the rotation values so just stop at 90 degree so it is rotated and then g to move and move it in the center now i'll add uh, the mirror modifier and make the axis y okay but because the pivot center of this uh, plane is in the center so it's not working right now so just press control a and press all transform so if you go to edit mode and move it you can see it's mirrored also click this clipping now just edit it so s z and then s y now i'll just drag these vertices g z and this one g z g you can also just middle click and drag in the direction of the axis that you want to move the vertices so i have just selected these vertices and i'll press middle click and drag it as you can see this green line comes so this is the drag direction now and it indicates in which direction you are moving the vertices or edges or faces so let me just again make it a bit bigger now i'll go to loop cut and click and drag to add a loop cut here press 2 for edge mode select this edge and e to extrude it in the upward direction great it looks good all right so let me just drag this reference image behind good now i'll just make this uh, a little inwards so just select it and rotate it in the z direction like this and you can see the mirror part is also rotating with it but if you press control a and all transform so it again goes back to the mirror position so this shape looks fine now to make it a 3d shape or a solid shape like this i prefer it adding it with a modifier so you can come to modifiers and add a solidify modifier you can also press control a again just to make sure that the scale is applied now here in the thickness you can give it a thickness and you can see it makes it a solid shape all right so now let's make this hex shape shift a mesh cylinder and in the add cylinder option select six vertices 
then R Y and again drag it 90 degree and then just drag it 30 degree great go to edit mode tab three for face mode select this face this face x f now just a for all s x now two for edge mode alt click to select this edge loop and s to scale it down and you can also press g g to scale it in the direction of the corner edges yeah so this looks uh, good now to create this shape select the edge loop tool or loop cut tool click in the middle and in the loop cut option select two so we got two edges now again go to one select vertices s to scale now add another loop cut and drag it three for face select this face alt e and extrude face along normal and just extrude it downwards great again go to face mode 3 select this face x f okay so now to duplicate this shape in all these places there are many options however i prefer this particular option that i delete all these faces so shift select x f and come out of the edit mode tab now just copy it and drag it along this so shift d r control drag and 60 select again shift d r control drag 180 again shift d r and shift d r so it quickly becomes the shape now just select all these and control j to join them now go to tab edit mode one for vertices a for all and press m to merge by distance so all these corner edges are now merged you can see here it removed 18 vertices so now we get this shape all right so now let's select this uh, hex that is besides it so select this shift d and middle click drag to move it out a bit and just s to scale it now go to tab edit mode and press 3 to face mode and alt click to select this set of faces now I just want to tell you one more thing that <coughs> this alt click selection works uh, where uh, you are clicking so suppose I want to select this set of faces then I have to click near this edge like alt click here so it selects uh, this face set and if you want this face set you have to select uh, click near this edge so alt click here for this selection and alt click here for this selection so we want this one so alt click here and x f and i don't want these faces also so just select these and 
x f great now i also do not want these edges so you can either select these and dissolve or you can quickly select a and press f3 for search bar and search for this limited dissolve so if you press this you can see it holds the shape and dissolves the extra vertices great now let me just scale it a bit more and again go to edit mode 2 alt click to select the outer edge and scale it a bit more just like that and select the inner edge also scale that too and then I'll just extrude it inwards so E and S and extrude it inwards so now this makes this shape and I'll just join it so that it covers this gap so G and move it inwards great now again to uh, make these solids you can just select and add a solidify modifier okay so now i'll just add all these basic shapes just select this one again shift d s all right so now let's create this middle shape so it's pretty simple shift a mesh select plane r y control drag 90 s to scale it down again just drag it outwards control a all transform and add a mirror modifier in y direction of course select this clipping on again go to tab 1 select G drag select now select all SZ and S G to move it upwards drag select G Z select it in down direction great again just let me drag it a bit and drag upwards a bit great now just add edge loops here and another one select face xf now select all shift D drag shift D again and drag great it looks a little bit bigger so just scale it down a bit and drag it upwards and delete this face 
great now again to make it thicker just add this solidify modifier with the same thickness value 0 0.03 great now let's add this uh, star so shift a mesh cylinder and make the count 10 now just scale it down bring it forward control rotate 90 degree tab 3 xf asx and now alt z for x-ray mode alt middle click drag one four vertices and select the alternate vertices and i want to scale these vertices down but i do not want the scaling to happen in the x direction so i'll press s shift x and now as you can see when i scale it it will only scale in y and z direction so just drag it go to front view and check if it looks good yeah and now just scale it in x again go to edit mode select the outer vertices and press m merge at center and select these external vertices and press gg and drag it all the way behind great now select a m by distance so this is our star let me just drag this a bit little bit inside and just drag it here all right so this is the final shape and i have added these and these here and i'll just put this one also in here and finally when you are finishing the work you can just apply all these modifiers just keep in mind that apply the modifiers uh, in the order that you have created them so the top ones in first and then the bottom ones so first apply this mirror modifier and then this solidify modifier and let me just put it in the center snap selection to cursor so it comes in the center and just scale it down to bring it here all right so now let's go to shade this so first of all i'll start with this outer hex shape now go to shading select a new material and i'm gonna give it a metal blue and it creates a default principal bsdf material and press ctrl t so that it adds these three nodes now to use this shortcut uh, you have to have the node wrangler add-on active so go to file edit preferences and in add-ons you can search for node wrangler and check this on let me just start the key viewing here you can press n in any window to select 
this uh, to hide this bar sidebar so now come here and select this and delete we don't need this so what I need is that it's a metal object so I'll just create the metallic one great now I'll just lower the roughness so it's a bit more reflective and now I'll give it a slight bluish tint so it looks even better and this texture coordinate node has the UV input for now you can also use the object input and shift A and add a color ramp and also add a noise texture let me drag it here and add these nodes mapping to noise texture and factor to color ramp now I'll use this noise texture to add a little bit of uh, bump so shift A add a bump lower the strength maybe 0.5 and add this color into height and normal to normal now you can see the noise texture as bump However, it is too high, so I'll just scale it like 100 or maybe more fine 200. And now go to this color ramp and drag this. Yep, like that. So you can see these surface imperfections here. Let me just bring the strength even more down. 0.1. Yeah, so this looks good. And the scale is still too high. And the scale is still low so you can increase it even more like 500 or even more and here you can control the roughness value Yeah, so now this looks good. Great. So this is a basic uh, metal texture. And you can select the outer hex and add the same material that we just created so metal blue and just duplicate it here rename rename it to metal red and just make it red like a darker red yeah so this looks good maybe even more dark great and now select these parts here and give it the same material I have another tip for you so in blender you have this material and asset library which I have added here you can see here its name is blender kit you can add this in the add-ons if you go to edit preferences and add-ons search for 
blender kit this one here 3d view so if you turn this asset library on you can find multiple materials here like select this material and go to categories and here you have all these materials so if i go to metal click on metal make sure you are connected to internet because it searches these on the net and it gives you the results here so all these materials you can see here so most of these materials are royalty free as you can see in the description and you can use them in your projects and to use a material from here like this one you just select and drag it and drop it to your part So it downloads it and applies it on your part. To view it, press Z, go to rendered view. Or the viewport shading view. So this is the downloaded material. So like this, I have already downloaded these materials. As you can see, this uh, fine gold material. This is in this metal section. You can search it here or you can also search it here in the search bar, search for gold and here comes the gold materials. Just select any of these materials and drag it onto your parts. Alright, so now the remaining thing is this centerpiece and it has a hex pattern over it. Now again, uh, for creating that hex pattern, there are several ways, but uh, I searched online and I found this one tutorial by 100 drips channel, uh, Hex Shader Pro, procedural hexagon pattern. And this guy has two variations of this shader, one for free and one for paid. So I downloaded the free version this is the one so it has a blender file and you can append the material from this blender file so to do that go to file append and locate that uh, blender file so it is in downloads and hexagon and select that blend file and then you get these options go to materials and select that hex material now I'll apply that hex material here so select this and this is the one so as you can see it creates a hex pattern so this is the node and this is the uh, threshold value so if you drag this it uh, basically controls the thickness of the hex and this value controls the tiling so just tile it according to your need and put the threshold a greater value like 0 0.5 0 0.45 maybe yes so now I'll just add colors to it and to do that let me just delete this emission shader put it here and i'll mix two principal bsdf shaders so shift a search for principal bsdf shift d to duplicate it and just mix these two together so mix shader and mix these two so one of these will be for the hex pattern itself and one of these will be for the background so let me create the background first so shift a 
search for a gradient and I want this gradient to be spherical and I'll input this texture coordinate node then add a color ramp and if you put the factor here and just add it to the base color now if you control shift click on this you can preview the output of a particular node let me turn on the keys so now if you drag this like this you can see this gradient texture is controlling the spherical gradient here now just make it a darker color something like this great and make it rough specular down so this is the background and now I'll add the hex pattern in the second principal shader so just add this to base color now this value will go to the factor here and this value will go to the shader output yeah so basically we are mixing these uh, principal bsdf shaders and the base color is controlled from here so for this also i'll make it darker and just to make it a bit bump i'll add a bump so shift a bump put this greater than value in the height section and add it to the normal just reduce some strength great and you can also reduce the specular or maybe increase the specular to make it a metal wire type of look you can play around with these settings and get the desired results all right so now our material is finally finished for all the components now to develop the look of this as a whole you can use the uh, inbuilt blender hdri files and the best way to get these is they are located here just go to this uh, viewport shading mode and select this and here you get the options of different uh, inbuilt hdris so this is the city hdri so you can select different environments and check your results like this so i find this uh, city hdri the most better looking result now to finalize the same look in the ev renderer i have to add this same hdri to the environment so to do that go to shading and select the ev renderer for now 
this has no lights i deleted the default light also and come here and select this world setting and select this background and press ctrl t remember you have the node wrangler add-on selected so this adds uh, an environment texture with mapping and texture coordinate node so just add it from the installation location of the blender so generally it is in c program files blender foundation go to the folder and in data files you can get this folder in uh, studio lights and here you have these worlds so these are the uh, hdris which you use in the look dev mode so here you get this city exr select this so now you can see we get the same result as we get it here now to uh, make the background transparent go to the render properties and then in film select this transparent option now just to add a little bit more reflection to it i'll add some area lights so shift a light area and point it towards the part scale it and increase the power here like 200 so now you can see a better reflection on the part so in area lights you have this center line which shows where this uh, area light is pointing towards so to point it towards our center piece you can just go to constraints and add this track to constraint and select the target to be the center part so now if you move it in any direction it will always uh, point towards our part all right so now i'll just add the camera animation so select the camera and to go to camera view press 0 and when you move it it will just exit out of the camera view so to fix that you can select n so that these options come here and in the view tab you can check this camera view option on so it locks the camera view now if you go to camera view again you can set your camera so let me start from somewhere here and just select the focal length 55 mm now i'll drag another window so drag it from here so this will be my camera view and this will be my working view okay so now just select the camera and in here go to your first keyframe and press i and select this location and rotation so it adds a keyframe here now i will move it in the front side but before doing that i'll just add the same track to constraint and track it to the middle part so that now if i move my camera it will automatically look towards the center part so now just drag the timeline 
to about 120 maybe and then just position the camera for the front side just like that and at the right position again press I and location and rotation so now if you press play you can see the camera movement all right so now let's create that uh, uh, firefly type of effect so let's create a plane and shift H to isolate it and let's go to shading select object and press new and give it a material fireflies so now just press ctrl T so that we get these nodes I don't need this image texture rather add a noise texture and a color ramp so just add this vector and then the factor to factor now control shift click to view this go to rendered mode and you can see this noise texture is applied now to make it a more crispier just drag these like this yeah now just select this and duplicate this color ramp for using in alpha so add this factor again and set this color to alpha and for this color ramp I'll add it to base color and here I'll just change the color so select this and make it a darker fire type of color decrease the specular and increase the roughness now to make the alpha work just come here and in options select the blend mode to alpha clip and also shadows to alpha clip now play with this value and you can get the desired results like this and also you can play with this value and get different type of results to make it more rough you can add more details yeah so this looks good and also let me add a bit of emission here so again select this darker color and add bit of emission now to view this glow and emission come to the EV render settings and select this bloom and now if you increase the strength you can see this is the firefly material now again alt H scale it down and just duplicate it 
and add a bit of variation to it. So I'll just add some edge loops and edit it a bit. All right. So now let's add the particles. So here I have these variations, these planes. So click M, select new collection and name it fireflies. So now just add a plane, scale it a bit and rotate it. and just place it somewhere like here and rotate it towards our part okay now add this uh, particle so click this and add the particle settings now in particle settings let's set the number to about 400 emit from faces and select this velocity and give this normal velocity about 1.5 select this rotation and randomize the rotation to about 0.5 add a bit of phase also and randomize the phase and in the physics tab set the mass to extremely low like 0.15 and in the render section select this render as to collection and set the scale to be about 0.7 and set scale randomization and that collection will be the collection that we just created so select it from here fireflies and now go to this field weight settings and drag this gravity down so maybe about 0.15 now press play to check it so it's working so just rotate it to make it work in the right direction good you can also select this and in the render settings uncheck this show emitter so that the plane will not be shown in the render and now to make it flying uh, through our scene just add a force field so shift a and force field add wind and just rotate it in the right direction like this you can also move it here just to match it more precisely and select this and go to physics properties and here uh, increase the strength to be about 2.5 now again check this so yes it is working now here you can see maybe increase the scale a bit more so here in the scale section make it 0.85 and to bit uh, to add a bit more uh, variation just add another force field turbulence and bring it here and in the settings of this force field again increase the strength to about 2.5 so now you see a little bit of variation in the movement of the fireflies so you can play around with these settings and get the desired results all right so now let's create the background so shift a add a plane rotate it 
and move it somewhere around here and point it towards the camera and scale it so that it fills the whole background <clears throat> now just select it and shift H to isolate it and now go to shading let me just fill this create a new material give it a material of uh, background so name it background and now I need a gradient texture and a color ramp so shift a gradient texture and then again shift a color ramp just add this factor to color ramp and add this color to base color you can see the gradient going on here you can further modify it like this however this is good enough and let me just make it dark color darker red something like this decrease the specular increase the roughness and bring it down a bit and select this black color to be darker blue something like this great now I need a noise texture and I'll mix the noise texture with this color so shift a noise and then shift a search for mix RGB and add this color with this noise factor and then apply this to base color so now you can see the noise color is mixed however the mixing is not proper so you can select this factor and bring it down and now you see it mixes so to control the position of this noise texture select it and press ctrl T so that these two nodes are added and you can also bring the scale up and add more details to this noise and also change this value to add with this a bit more maybe just make the colors a bit more lighter great so now I'll just add some uh, keying to this uh, location X and Y if you select this X value of the location in mapping node and move it you can see the noise going up and down and similarly with Y to left and right so let me just drag this window and you can change the settings from here so I selected this timeline and in the first frame just right click in the mapping node and insert keyframes and now you can just go to end of the frames or maybe even more and then increase this value to about 0.8 and this one in the negative direction so minus 0.6 maybe and then again insert keyframes so now if you press play 
you can see the noise moving. So great. Now I'll just add it with my camera. So Alt H. Now if you go to the first frame, you can see the background is uh, within the camera range. But as the camera moves, the background stays there. So to fix this problem, select this background, shift select your camera and press Ctrl P. So this sets the parent option on and select this object keep transform option. So this makes this uh, background the child of this camera. So now if you press play, you can see the background itself is moving with the camera and it stays in the frame and it gives the illusion that it is the fixed background. Alright, so this is the final animation. I have tweaked the settings a little bit and now to render this out let me just add one more thing so if you select this camera you can go to settings and here you can choose this depth of field setting select this and here choose this center part to be the point of focus so you can see here it adds a bit of blurriness in the foreground and in the background so this makes it more uh, good looking and in the ev render settings you can just increase the samples maybe about 150 and turn this ambient occlusion on and uh, make the distance to be about 1 and to render it out as the video file you can just come here and in the output settings select this file format to be FF MPEG video and choose your save location for the rendered output file and from here go to render and render animation so this will create the video file directly from the rendering and we'll meet in the next tutorial thank you so much bye bye